And the first point on the agenda is it's usually questions and issues open forum if anyone has anything they want to raise. And as usually nobody has anything, uh, I would suggest to remove this from the agenda because I don't think we ever had anything in this section. Yeah, fine by me if it's not being used. Okay, then the next part is PRs and issues. Uh, there's not that many open PRs. What I added was that the note pool, the first note pool PR should be now ready for review. So I guess uh, Paolo Tom, some fun for you. <laughs> um, is that much different from uh, uh, the, yeah the ones that I kicked the tires in the during the last month? No, or so? no, I. I, I don't know how much you look through the code then. Functionally, it should be the same. Uh, Code-wise, it should be mostly the same with tests. Okay. Okay, does anyone have any other PRs they want to raise or discuss? If not, then in the proposals, uh, there's a new proposal uh, about the server-side apply. I know a bunch of us uh, left some review comments there. Uh, if anyone's interested in this topic, then please uh, have a look and uh, review it as well. And I don't think there was anything new since last time on the proposal side. So I don't know if anyone wants to raise anything specific. And if not, then I guess, can you actually still see my screen? We can. Yeah. Yes. Okay, the weird zoom coloring disappeared, so it's confusing. Okay, then I guess the next part is the issue triage. So, Ability to configure node selector at port level. Seems like you triaged it already two weeks ago and there was no, no response. So what do we want to do with this? I think we, I mean, sort of, Two weeks is maybe not quite long enough for people to necessarily respond. So, um, I, yeah, wait another couple of weeks. And um, if we don't hear back, then it is the first, the sixth, Jakob, not the first, the seventh. Oh, I thought it's already July. Damn me. No such luck, I'm afraid. It'll be Christmas soon enough, don't worry. No, it's not like I'm getting any presents, so. So like this, let's wait till next time. Yep. And then if we've not heard back, then we can think about closing it. Because it's... Okay. 
so then the next thing is about some failing tests on Mac OS with the Arch 64 CPUs. I guess that was not triage last week. So I guess there are definitely some things which are flaky, so maybe we want to track that as a bug. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, something to add for this issue because I also run in my on the test in my local environment and it also failed for some tests. Um, but I'm not sure if that's the uh, because I'm running in the um, M1 chip machine or some configuration in my environment because I know Jakub yourself is also running under the uh, M1 chip machine so if you can pass the test maybe it should not relate it to the Mac OS or yeah, you know, the CPU to, to be honest my guess is that there isn't any ultimate issue with the operating system or architecture. But I think these some of these tests are simply flaky and it could be, I don't know about how spec is your machine and so on, whether the tests pass more often or fail more often. So I don't think it's something what's kind of only about your about your machine. I think there's definitely some flakiness which can be looked into. To be honest, some of these tests they fail in the CI from time to time as well. So, so uh, I don't think that's without an issue. But at least from my experience, the the issue does not seem to be like they don't work at all. They seem to be passing for me. I, I, to be honest, I have no idea how much role it might play, how you run the Kubernetes cluster for the integration tests and the things like whether you use Podman or whether you use Docker desktop and so on, like the the things you raised there about the container build with, for example, the target platform variable not being the same, suggests that Podman is not 100% compatible with Docker desktop. So, yeah, who knows what's, what's going on there. Yeah, makes sense. So like this, does it make sense? Yep. Okay, what labels do we keep there? I feel like we can add the help wanted label there, but I'm not sure. 
if thing like this exactly attracts interest, so maybe you should just stick with the buck. Well, maybe someone with the same issue will be interested to fix it. You never know. Okay. So like this? Yeah. Okay, so one question, so, Jacob. Can I just ask yeah. on that? Um, so what's the behavior you're looking for here? Um, if somebody was to start looking at this, would they raise, say if they can reproduce um, a consistently failing test and then raise a separate issue for that? Is that the behavior you'd want? I, I, I'm not sure I follow. I think the issue here is with the tests themselves, not with the code which would yeah. be flaky. So I think the solution is to rewrite or rework the test somehow to test the same in some more stable way. Okay, so you'd, you'd want comments on the this. Yeah, so on the this like issue. If, yeah, text test yeah, or, XYZ is flaky for me. Here's a PR that I believe fixes yeah, it, that yeah, sort of thing. For, that, that's what I would imagine. Okay. But I mean, yeah, I didn't follow about that that much. It's more just the first thing which came to my mind. Okay, thanks. Okay, then the next one is about the informers getting stuck. I actually opened it, that seems to be a real issue which seems to affect a small subset of users but obviously it's a problem so fabricate is looking stephen hawking is looking into some improvements to how the informers work so yeah i'm not sure there's that much to do on our side until the next fabricate release but yeah i wanted to track this as a bug and also use it to kind of collect the environment so far i think it's four different aks versions and one gke version uh, of the people affected so i assume we should keep it yeah i think it's useful to just for people to be able to discover it and um, watch the progress. So definitely keep it. Okay, let's keep it open because there will be some more duplicates later. So this thing looks more like a question. Maybe we should convert this to a discussion. Yes, that doesn't seem to be a general issue, but more issue of a particular user. Yeah, skimming through the issue, it seems that it works for you. You already did all the tries, so. Okay, where is the conversion button? Okay. Next one is about somehow querying the 
container registry and skipping the build when it already exists. To be honest, I think that would be a very complicated because we would need to have some functionality to query the registries to actually understand what's in there. And I think it would be quite complicated to also uh, find out if the image already exists and if it has the right configuration because the Docker file essentially is downloading some files and so on. And it's not always obvious if the files changed, if the base image changed and so on. So I think we would need to anyway build it, then somehow compare it. But that's essentially what the container should do anyway, kind of see if the layers already exist. And if the same layer exists, then don't push it again. So I would probably suggest this should be rejected. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so like this, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, Next one is about cluster operator restarts often. And from the log, it seems that it's the leadership election which makes it restart. So I suggested to make sure it has enough CPU to handle the leader election and so on. There was no response since. Unless someone has the same experience, maybe we can also discuss, convert this to discussion as a as an individual issue rather than a generic problem and bug. Yeah, I was going to say the same, yes.
Ok. So next one is about the Grafana dashboards. I don't really know what to do with this one as it's one of those issues where it's not really obvious that what is the right thing and what is just something what fix it for one set of users and breaks it for another set of users. Anyone has any idea? I remember one similar to this. I I I, I don't know if it was a uh, uh, Jacobus Tescal to dig into this somehow, where people uh, where we have this DS Prometheus placeholder and people are not able to use that or the dashboard doesn't work. Or it was something different. I remember yeah. this kind of a thing to be recurring. Yeah, maybe it was something uh, something similar. And I also remember that you opened a PR to fix it, right, Jakub? Yeah, I think the problem which I was digging it was that we missed uh, data source certificated in the queries in our dashboards. And uh, yeah, I solved that. But from the issue description here, it looks to me like that uh, the data source is not propagated correctly into the into the dashboard itself. Yes, this is the PR you are talking about. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so it was, yeah, kind of different. Yeah, it was missing the data source. Okay. So I think in general, I'm fine to track this as a bug, but I don't think the fix is really obvious. So yeah, maybe we can keep it, but describe there that we need to find the proper fix working for everyone. I can try to take a look on it and see what the, the, the are the possibilities. Even because this feature in the um, in the Elm charts about Grafana, this dashboards enabled through, was that that yeah, it was one of the new PR that we got from uh, the community, yeah, that, right? That that was added in the previous release by someone from the community, yes. Yeah, and it worked. Well, I assume it worked for the person who edited it. <laughs> okay. I mean, the change was not to the dashboard. The change was to basically to be charts. able from the Helm chart to create okay. the config yeah. maps with the Helm charts, which some other tooling should load. So, yeah, like the PR, the part of the PR which definitely works is creating the config maps. I personally, at least, never tried kind of what happens with the config maps as I'm not using the Grafana deployment, which is supposed to process that. Okay, so like this, and we keep it as a bug. Yeah. yeah. Should we add help wanted to it or? Yeah, I would say yes. So like this. Okay, 
next one. So that's about rolling the Kafka cluster in parallel. There's already been quite a lot of discussion from various people. So I guess we wanna keep it. I'm not sure we want to go into the details as part of the triage. Tom? Yeah, I think I think this is worth looking into more. Um, so yeah, I think it. That's all that needs to be said. Um, we need to sort of do a bit of experimentation and figure out, you know, if this is actually going to bring worthwhile benefits um, in more than just sort of a few use cases. Uh, and yeah, whether it will be worth the complexity cost, but definitely we need to investigate. I guess this should have a proposal if we proceed with it in some way. Yeah, I, th I think a proposal would be good just so that it, we can get a lot of review of exactly sort of what the algorithm would be because it's the the sort of area that it's easy to overlook um, stuff and then find out that you've broken somebody's use case. Okay, so that's enhancement, needs triage, needs proposal. Okay. The next one is, so this is actually about the stack informers just in the user operator in this case. So I would suggest to close it as a duplicate to the other issue we have so that we don't keep million issues to track the same. Or? Yeah, seems reasonable. Sorry, I was just thinking that the new topic operator is also going to be afflicted by this. But... Okay, so this one is something what I opened because it's a new feature in the new version of the Kafka exporter and it seems something useful for clusters with many topics and many consumer groups. So I think it would be useful to have it supported. Yeah, and uh... Yeah, I would say that uh, health needed and even good start could be good labels because it's a way for learning about how, how the model is updated and going through the process too. Uh, I think that Tina or Ali or someone already picked it up, so I'm not sure we should mark it as a good start. Ah, okay. I didn't know so. If not, it could be a good start. Yeah, we're already working on it. Okay. Maybe should we start to use more the assignees on GitHub? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure it finds the right person right now. Uh, we should ideally do it, but 
probably not not right now maybe just just drop a comment uh to say that someone is working on it i already said there that it's already being worked on okay fine okay Tom, this is from you. Yeah, this is something that I spotted um, the other day working on um, the topic operator. Um, so I guess you propose that the plugin configuration should basically move into the modules yeah, the, from the root form. Yeah, that's right. It's not actually that difficult. I don't mind doing it if we agree that it's worth doing. Yeah, I guess I guess it is. I guess what you described there is correct. Or anyone disagrees with it? Okay, then let's proceed with it. Will you do it or should we set some help wanted labels or something on it? Um, assign it to me, I'll take a look. Okay. Uh, uh, Kyle is not here because it's night in the US, so should we skip this one until next time when he's in? Paolo, what do you yeah. think? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Then, yeah, I'm not sure what to do with this one. Apparently, Java needs some option in some specific order. But because this YAML structure is using object and not list, it doesn't keep the ordering. So, yeah, it's basically doesn't allow to set some options. Uh, I help the user work around it using the setting directed environment variables, but I wonder what we should do with the issue. Sorry, I didn't hear all you said before, Jakob, but is the solution not as simple as using a linked hash map? I don't think it is because YAML and JSON doesn't keep the ordering. It might still work anyway. I'm pretty sure that um, Jackson respects the ordering. I think it uses a linked hash map by default. Um, so it might be worth the sort of yeah seeing whether or not that i mean obviously it doesn't stop the kubernetes side of things doing whatever but
I mean, is this a JVN bug or are these flags actually documented as a recurring order? Does that seem very strange to me? I didn't investigate it, but but it seems to be on purpose to me. Yeah, I think the minus XX aren't actually um, specified as part of, you know, the, the JRE at all. It's entirely up to um, a particular, you know, sort of vendor of something that um, does conform to the Java spec, what XX flags they provide and how any of that works. Um, and therefore, you get what is implemented, I think. So whilst uh, it's almost certainly specified for non XX flags, um, well, you know, sort of how the order might be relevant. Um, I think once you're into minus XX land, then all bets are off and it's just, you know, whatever actually works. Okay, so we can look at linked hash map and let's see. What labels should we give it? Should be help on it? Yeah, and it's probably a, a fairly simple thing to do as well. Um, so maybe a good start perhaps though I'm, I'm willing to be talked out of that because i always um, underestimate how difficult any particular thing is well i guess changing the api and trying give linked hash map instead of map forks could be easy not sure if that doesn't work if that's still a good start so i don't know do we want to give it the good start label or not okay silence as an agreement Okay, the next issue is again about the informers. So I'm suggesting the same, closing it as a duplicate to the other one. Yep. Okay, next one is from you, Paolo. Yeah, so it's something that uh, I noticed yesterday while I'm working on this uh, CA issue. So uh, yeah, kind of uh, renewing the, the, the private key, uh, but I guess we have the problem in other cases and we have different roller, rolling on the, for the bots. So uh, I noticed that uh, with, um, with Kafka and Zookeeper pods, uh, yeah, it's clear in the log that we are rolling them because it's the keeper roller, the Kafka roller. So we are handling them in order to roll. But when it comes to components that we have for uh, deployment, like uh, entity operator, cruise control, there are um, cases where uh, we have uh, the rolling log because uh, it's inside the, the CA reconciler, which is uh, rolling them and logging what's happening. In other case, instead, for example, when a new certificate is generated, it seems that uh, we are just patching the deployment 
and uh, it goes through the normal flow uh, using the common code that we have. And uh, yeah, you, you just see, as I pasted here, you see that uh, new certificates are generated, but you don't have evidence that the deployment, of course, is rolling the pod, so the pod is restarted. Um, yeah, also, I was wondering if we can improve that. Um, yeah. I don't think you want to write a custom rolling for deployment. Yeah, I know. Or at least maybe logging at info level that we are patching the deployment. We at are least. patching the deployment every time. And that's also true. Yeah, I I didn't think more about a kind of workaround yet. Uh, just opening the issue for now. So should we keep it till next time? Yes, let's keep it because you know when you get a log from someone else uh, and you see the log, you yeah you lost any track that the the pod was restarted. Okay, then let's keep it for next time, but I'm not sure what the solution is there. Me neither. It's just that I was frustrating to, to check the logs and try to understand things. And then when I had the log scrolling, following using the kubectl command, and then even checking how the pods were behaving, I finally noticed that the pods were, were rolling. Okay, so let's keep it for next time then. Yeah, okay. Okay, then I opened three issues. They are mostly follow-up things to the node pool PR, which I mentioned earlier as being up for review. Uh, they are created to keep the scope of the initial PR small and avoid running it longer and creating more conflict. And in some cases like this one, we need to first uh, first update the system tests because if implemented right now, it will actually break the break the system tests. So so this one is more or less about adding the more advanced logic for assigning the node IDs to the brokers. The ideas from the proposal that you could say this node pool should be using the IDs from the range 1000 to 2000 and things like that. This one is about the changes to make the Kafka node pool use for craft as mandatory, which is part of the proposal, but that's the one which actually if done today would break the, the system test. So we need to first make use of the node pools in the craft system tests and then we can kind of implement it and the last one is about the the node pool pr at support for the controller nodes in craft but because of the admin api not talking with the controller nodes we are currently skipping the rolling of them so that's tracking this one so Unless someone has something more for these, I would suggest to just move these out of the triage and yeah, keep them as a as a trackers for these things. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, fine with me. In which case, that's it for the issue triage.
anyone wants to triage something else or can we move to the next topic? Hearing nothing, over to you, Jakub. Okay, thanks. So um, in recent weeks, we uh, kind of came across two services which are provided by Red Hat. First one is called Packet. It's something similar like uh, GitHub Actions or Red Pipelines. Basically, you can specify uh, uh, some kind of jobs, and uh, these jobs will be executed on a specific infra, and that's where testing farm came on scene. Uh, testing farm is a service that provides uh, resources on AWS. It provides uh, X86 and ARM resources for AppSync projects. And uh, based on the configuration from Packet or from GitHub Action, it uh, spin up a specific uh, uh, VMs and uh, users can, let's say, set up their mini cube or client clusters and run the test or just uh, build images, etc. cetera. Uh, these services are primarily used for uh, Fedora projects and CentOS, I think. Uh, they are building uh, some RPM things uh, with them, but uh, we talk with the with the owners of the services, and uh, we are able to onboard these services and to use the resources. Uh, the good thing on this is that the resources are completely free for us. Uh, there are no time limits for jobs, so we can execute, let's say, ten hours build of system tests or something like that, and we won't be. Um, um, uh, let's say that uh, the resources are kind of unlimited, so there will be no other team that will complain about uh, hitting some quotas, etc. Uh, there are several different uh, triggers for the jobs. You can use commit, uh, pull request trigger, or just a manual one, which we are currently trying to implement in packet and pro uh, promote it to production to kind of not overwhelm the service with uh, a lot of uh, uh, requests for system test. Uh, our goal is basically uh, around there, uh, most of the pipelines which we use in Azure, I mean for system tests. So we will uh, save uh, some quotas from Azure and we will keep Azure just for building the images and, uh, and docs. And uh, we can move a lot of uh, testing to testing farm. And uh, this will also allow us to run more, uh, more different jobs, more different combinations, and uh, with also different, uh, uh, different architectures like ARM, which is not possible on Azure at this moment. Uh, the only problem is that uh, it's not so reliable as Azure uh, pipelines and GitHub Actions, but uh, in case there is some kind of issue, it's uh, resolved very quickly because there are some SLAs which are uh, internal to the service. So just for testing purposes on PRs, it should be completely fine. Uh, regarding the testing of uh, releases, I think we can still keep uh, the pipelines on Azure and uh, use it just uh, on demand if needed. But uh, when uh, UPR will be opened, we will be uh, mainly focused on uh, running the test on testing farm. Uh, David Corner already opened PR with integration, so you can take a look on it. And also we opened one testing PR where we uh, basically uh, testing the packet on our own. So uh, the way how we will use it is that we will trigger a specific testing job only, which will spin up the infrastructure uh, and then do the same as we do on Azure. So uh, set up a mini cube cluster, build the images, trigger the specific system test and return the results back to GitHub or back to, back to pull request itself. Uh, basically, I just want to know if uh, we'll be interested to onboard to these services. Uh, it's uh, provided by Red Hat, but uh, because I am uh, I'm one of the Red Hat employees, uh, 
there should be no problem to kind of uh, get access to these services and everything is available in upstream for any user uh, from our organization. So it should work very smoothly and it will save uh, a lot of uh, trouble with uh, and way <laughs> quotas, which we have uh, shared on uh, Azure pipelines. And also it will bring us some resources for ARM uh, certification. So what do you think? To, to be honest, I don't think we should move anything away from Azure because I don't oh. think there's anything like unlimited resources. Everything okay, so what's unlimited, everything about unlimited resources is something what will be closed down on one day. So I'm fine with adding that and using that, like for example, using that for ARM64 system tests. Uh, I think that's completely fine, but I would avoid anything from moving from Azure pipelines at this point. I would keep both at yeah. the same time. As I mentioned, for releases, I would like to still keep using Azure pipelines because we have uh, the whole chain of uh, triggering the pipelines. So it completely makes sense to keep it there and basically extend this uh, with, with testing farm if needed or on pull requests, as I mentioned. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we want to run system tests for every PR. So I think it should probably be still through some command. Yes, that's the reason why we are implementing it in packet. And it should be hopefully promoted into production next week. So after that, we will be able to uh, onboard. And, and I think if you want to keep Azure pipelines, then it makes sense to, for example, for a start focus on ARM there, as we don't have that on Azure. Yeah, we already have uh, all pipelines basically migrated let's say um, we are reusing all the scripts which we use on for azure so there should be no duplicate of the code and uh, it's working fine on azure uh, i'm sorry uh, on arm and on uh, x86 so i think we tested it properly we're just waiting for uh, for the triggering uh, options Yeah, so <clears throat> I, I totally agree with what Jakub said. Uh, it should not be a kind of replacement for Azure. We should keep Azure. And yeah, you already said that it will be the case. Uh, it's great to have uh, to use it for the ARM that we are missing on Azure. Just, yeah, I don't know how much load will, will be for you to, to keep them together. So everything that you made on one side, it will run on the other side as well uh not the arm side of course because we don't have on azure but uh yeah they should be they should stay together okay so in case there are no objections um we will keep uh, the PR updated with the latest information and when uh, uh, when the option for triggering the jobs manually from pull request will be available in packet in production, uh, we can uh, probably go through the PR, do some reviews and uh, eventually merge it. Yeah, that, uh, I, I think in the PR, we don't even uh, remove anything from Azure, so it should be fine. Well, it, anyway, if I understood it correctly, it needs to wait for the trigger to be promoted, so. Yes, yes. So we can review it when it's ready. It was told to us that we can still use it. It should be no problem, but yeah, it's it doesn't make sense to trigger uh 10 jobs for every every commit into pull request which is not even related uh, to the code for example for uh, docs so okay being 
cautious of the time. Anything else to this? If not, Paolo, uh, can the LFX mentoring program fit into two minutes? Yeah, I guess even less. Yeah, so uh, just updating that uh, we have got a slot for the LFX mentoring program uh, as we didn't get anything good from the Google Summer code uh, instead. So we have MNT starting from today, uh, three months until uh, August, uh, end of the August. Um, the project was about yeah, uh, writing a POC for uh, an NQTT Kafka bridge related to the producer part only, of course. And uh, the mentors would be me and Kyle uh, Liberty, who is one of the contributors on streams as well. Uh, just adding that yesterday I sent an email on the maintainers uh, mailing list because um, I, I say to the mentee to create a kind of a repo uh, which was private to his GitHub account, making me and Kyle less uh, contributors, collaborators. And But uh, I think that it would be great having this work to be more uh, kind of uh, in the open and in the community. So I sent this email in order to ask if it was a good idea to create a repo uh, in the streamers organization. Uh, Jakub mentioned that uh, he did the same for the Kafka access operator. So I have got uh, a couple of plus one, I guess from Jakub and from Lukas. So I would like to know if the other maintainers are okay, the others on the call, uh, if they yeah, want to reply to that email on the Slack, I also uh, wrote on Slack as well. Uh, and I can proceed today to create uh, this repo and uh, yeah, making that available to the mentee. Yeah, I completely agree. Okay, and we are out of time, so I guess there's no space for any other business. Hopefully, nobody had anything. Thanks for joining, and see you around or in two weeks on the next community call. See you guys. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thanks, bye. Thanks, bye. Bye. bye.